And so I had to use one that I had laying around, and it was a different height. Why is this still recording? Is it recording or is it just talking? It's recording, <laughs> but it's only recording for nine minutes, and we've been going longer than that. So. Nice. Well, there's some great footage. <laughs> Previously on Lost. It runs, it doesn't run well. Take the seat off. Anything you gotta do to these bikes other than, you know, start it or turn the radio on, seat has to come off first. I hate these goddamn pin connectors. This dude looked pretty varnishy. That is not very easy. This thing's kind of kicking my ass. So it's a different day. I did manage to get these carburetors out of the bike. Unfortunately, towards the end of the removal process, the batteries in my cameras were going dead and I was sort of at a level of frustration where I just wanted to get the damn things out of the bike and not mess with the cameras. I'll show as much as I can of the removal, but uh, that's kind of where we're at with those. Now, what I need to do is I need to go ahead and take all this shit off of here. There's a lot of vacuum lines still connected, all that. I gotta uh, take this top plate off, get the carbs apart from each other, and uh, start uh, cleaning everything up. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Check it out. One of the first things I wanna do is get a little penetrating lube onto these screws right here. I really don't want to strip the heads on these four screws here. That would be a total nightmare. So while I'm taking the time to kind of document where all the vacuum lines and everything are gonna go back to, I'm gonna shoot this with some lube and let it penetrate a little bit. I thought I had some PV blaster around, but I don't. So I'm just gonna use WD-40 cause that's what I have. And I'm just gonna liberally let some down into these spots. So what I'm gonna do as far as documenting where everything's at is I'm gonna take a whole bunch of pictures and try to get everything back the way it was. If you are going to tackle a project like this, pictures are gonna be your best friend. All right guys, looks like there is a linkage right there and right here that need to come apart. So there's some pins there and right there that need to come out to let these arms come free so the top plate can come off. I don't know if you can see this. Tiny little cotter pins. Uh, these little picks are kind of a lifesaver for doing this stuff. So uh, I'm gonna hang on to these, see if I can find some around that are that size. If not, I'll try to reuse those. Okay, when you pull it, there's a little plastic stay on here and another pin set up on the other side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna put all that shit back on the ends of these rods. And the little washer right there, pull that out. And now the top plate's off. So like I said, now that I got that off, these are those little rods I was talking about. I'm just gonna put this back on there and shove a pin back through just to hang on to this stuff so I don't lose anything. Now that that's off, we can get to some of these hoses and everything that was underneath. So uh, I still need to pull these off. This is actually the bottom side, but now that I pulled that off, I can get to the like this clamp and these and get this shit out of here, this guy here. Okay, so I, I went ahead and I cut the other one of these uh, blue guys since I'm replacing both of them anyway. I just packed that thing. I cannot find any needle nose pliers in this garage for some reason, so I'm probably gonna struggle worse than I need to just to get all this shit off. I'm just gonna start taking clamps off right now. Take your time if you do this, guys. Just don't wanna punch holes in, in your hoses or shred them up unnecessarily. Boy, that one's really stuck. Just slide a pick in gently and start working to break these hoses free. Then you can yank them off. I'm just gonna hold this up to the camera so if I need to consult the video later for reassembly, I can. That came off of that guy and that guy right there. 
left the T on it. Everything's kind of bent where it needs to go. I'm just gonna hang on to my parts, throw them all in a box. If you sure you know where they go back. All right, so there's those ones. I'll go ahead and I'll disconnect these vacuum lines right here now. It always amazes me, some lines will just come off super easy and some of these will just fight you every step of the way. Pretty annoying. Okay. All right, so those came off right here, these. Those, right there, right there, okay? Boom, boom, take those off. I'm just gonna pull these around and I can see, I don't wanna take this off of here cause this is gonna help me remember what's going on with this guy. So I'm just gonna pull this one, pull this one and those hoses are off. That went on right under that, right under that blue hose. That comes off of right there. And of course, this one winds around to the front. Get off of there, you bitch. I'm still fighting this one line. I had to stop, change the battery in the camera. So, you know, doing YouTube is pretty fun and I kind of like the shooting videos and editing and kind of coming up with some of this shit. But uh, when you have a project that you're really wanting to get done, such as rebuilding carburetors and you're trying to film all this shit, it adds a new level of pain in the ass to your project. Because camera batteries do not have a whole lot of life to them. This hose is really on here. Guys, the deeper I get into this project, the more I'm like, God, I should have just paid someone to do this. But I don't even want to guess how much somebody would charge for this job. I mean, this would be like over a thousand dollars, I bet you. It's just labor intensive pain in the ass. Granted, a professional mechanic who actually knows what they're doing has proper tools and know-how is gonna do this in probably a quarter of the time it takes me but their time also costs a premium you know it's hundred and something dollars an hour typically for shop labor and uh, I don't want to pay that I can do it myself it's just gonna take me a while and it's gonna be a struggle and a learning experience but uh, you gotta struggle a little bit to learn some shit don't uh, don't stab yourself with one of your picks. It hurts. You know, honestly, I'm probably gonna hit this with some WD-40 as well. Try to work some down underneath here. Sometimes you can just kind of grab them gently and wiggle like this. And if you can get it to twist, it's broken free. But these, uh, these lines have seen better days. I don't want to be grabbing them with the pliers too too much. So I don't want to have to replace every goddamn line if I don't have to. There's always got to be one goddamn thing to fight you. At least one. There's been several on this bike. I was going to do this last night, but I was working on the Kawasaki behind me. And uh, I pulled the battery out of it to take it in to get tested. And when I did, I apparently was not paying attention and I lost the little square nuts that go that slide in underneath the lead battery terminals so that you can you know connect shit to the terminals and uh, for the life of me no idea where they were could not find them had to dig around through a bunch of old hardware we had and sort of scab something together to use instead of what you're supposed to use and uh, it took me a while it was super frustrating I was getting pissed I was in no mood to go from something that was supposed to be so simple that just gave me headaches to something that's fairly difficult that, uh, you know, I just wasn't in the right frame of mind for it. I was already angry. Uh, I was not about to start ripping into this thing. Uh, I just uh, had thoughts of 
bad things happening if I was to start this last night. So, starting it today. Yeah, this last this is frustrating the hell out of me right now. Last night I'd have been throwing this shit across the fucking garage. Sometimes shit just does not go well. I think this clamp is still on that fucking barb. How long is this barb? Get off of the finally. Jesus Christ. There it goes. I uh, scratched up the outside, but there's no holes in it. All right, so got these off. I'll kind of wipe them up later, make them look pretty. Now I've got to pull, uh, this is the broken one. This is the one I just cut off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off as well. That line is fucking brittle. I don't know what the hell is its problem. Go ahead and pull this little unit out of here. Well, that one came super easy. Those ones were super simple to take off. This is the idle screw that threads up from your carburetors and ends up uh, right next to your gas fill uh, under the, the gas door. Whoa, uh-oh. That just popped out of this hole. Watch out for stuff like this, because if you lose these kinds of little parts, uh, it's gonna be all fucked up and real shitty. So keep, try to keep track of that stuff. Okay guys, I pulled the little screws out of this electrical, I, I don't know what this thing is. It's obviously some sort of important part. Uh, it's screwed on right here to the carburetor uh, by this little guy here. I'm not sure what it is, some kind of sensor type thing. Uh, I pulled the screws out, I stuck them back in here the way they went, taped it up so I wouldn't lose them. I'm gonna put them in my box of parts. In it goes, and then... No and then! And then! No and then! And then! No and then! And then! No and then! This is the idle screw. You just gotta back it out all the way. I gotta go in. Oop! I just dropped the spring off of it. So don't lose like the little washers and springs and shit. From right when I was able to see the end of the screw coming through the little housing, it was set at about eight turns is where it was at for idle before. I'm sure I'm gonna have to screw around with it, but that's a good start point when I put this back. Again, I'm just going to take some tape and tape this on there so I don't lose the little spring in the washer and put it in the box. I'm not 100% certain that I am going to rebuild these carbs. I think I had more issues with vacuum lines and, and stuff being cracked and broken and disconnected. I'm not 100% sure it was the carbs. I'm gonna start by just kind of cleaning the outside of this all up. It's just greasy, dirty crap everywhere. So first thing I'm gonna do is just start cleaning some of that up. I'll hit it with some uh, some carb cleaner and just start wiping some of the loose dirt off. Try to keep it from going down and gunking up the thing. I'll do it upside down, kind of like this. I just want to get some of the loose debris off of this. All right, I knocked some of the shit, the loose dirt and stuff off of these. They are really, really filthy on the outside. I mean, there's 34 years of crap built up on these. I'm gonna take the carbs apart from each other. I already took the top plate apart, took off those vacuum lines and, and, and some linkage. There's another linkage right here that I need to take off. So I'm just gonna remember, you know, how this went on. If I take this linkage bracket off, and again, it's just the tiny little cotter pins, just like that linkage on the other side was. If I take this off, and then... And then, <laughs> I'm gonna come in there, and I'm gonna put my foot in your ass if you say, and then, again! And then, 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 Take off the uh, accelerator. I think this is the accelerator pump. So if I pull this off of there, these two carbs and this uh, coolant rail, if I take that stuff off of there, these two carbs should pop apart. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'll start with this linkage. These little cotter pins are tiny. They're just adorable. They're so little. Come on. Ouch. Okay, this had two little spacers. It had a little metal washer and a little plastic washer. And I'm gonna put those back the way they came. The plastic was up against that pin and the metal was on the outside. 
Set those down. Do the same operation on this side. God damn, I'm gonna fucking hurt myself here. Keep stabbing myself with these damn picks. Take a quick picture real quick, just so I remember. I'm sure I've got a picture of this, but can't have too many. Ooh, there is a little plastic washer on the back side as well. Don't want to lose those. Put that plastic washer right back on there, as well as these other ones, for now. Just don't want to lose this shit, you know? If I end up soaking these in Kim Dip, I'll pull those off. Those pla Ow, man, that hurt where I was just stabbed myself get right under my fingernail. Working on motorcycles is dangerous. That linkage is off. Now, I think this accelerator pump can come off. There's a lot of things here. So you got this spring, uh, there's a cotter pin holding this tab onto there. Other than that, I think it's just these couple screws. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull this little pin out of here. Pin and the washer came off, there they are. Don't wanna lose them. Don't lose your spring. I'll just stick them back on here. Hold them on with a little pin. I'll put the spring over here in my little parts box. Put this retainer pin back. I think it's just these two screws now. I believe it's just these two and then this whole device comes off. Bolt in the washer. Bolt in the washer. Another little tiny spacer right here. Like I said, we just don't want to lose this stuff. It's like a little bushing or something inside the screw hole. So just like I did with my other parts, I'm gonna throw a piece of tape on that, try not to lose the pieces and try not to forget where each piece is actually supposed to go. All right, the only thing left holding these together is uh, this little coolant rail. Boom. I'm a little scared, guys, uh, to be truthful. This is a lot of, uh, it's a lot of stuff for a guy who re really has no experience doing it. Um, I think putting these back is gonna be a real headache, but we'll figure it out. If you're good at remembering where screws go, I guess you don't have to do this the way I'm doing it. Nobody ever said I did things like the right way. It's right for me. I mean, there's just a lot of different parts. I really, really don't wanna get them all mixed up. They start looking a little less intimidating, I know, once you start pulling them apart from each other and now you're holding individuals. I think what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pull these covers off uh, carefully because there's a big spring in there. And uh, what that's gonna do is allow me to take this plunger and the diaphragm and stuff out of there and clean up the needle and all that stuff that's inside of there. Other than that, it's just really, you know, you take the float bowl off and fuck around in there. I, I I don't know, like I said, it's like a coin flip at this point of, do I wanna go through the full rebuild, which kind of scares me because I'm kind of a chicken, or do I just try to clean the passages and, and the jets and everything up and put it back together? The biggest thing that's in my head right now is uh, resyncing the carbs and what a pain in the ass that could be, getting everything tuned back the way it's supposed to go is uh that's a frightening prospect for me i'm not gonna lie again i'm gonna just get after these i'll try to find a brush or something and really get into some of these crevices and knock some more of the dirt and shit off of there <laughs>